we're taking a look at two Titans in the midsize SUV segment. And these are not crossovers. These are legit SUVs. Um, here you have a Stallworth in a 2019 Toyota Highlander. And here you have a 2020 Telluride. But I feel like they're targeting the same people, but this lands at the younger family. This is not as edgy as that vehicle, but they are both in the same market and they're both super popular. So when this thing came out, I thought it was the size of a freaking excursion, the way they made it look. The Kia Telluride. And I will say this, for with this being a Kia, and there's questions about break-ins and the engine, this makes best use of space, uh, the best use of space out of any midsize SUV I've ever seen or been in. So I love that. It is squared off. These wheels I'm not a fan of. I'll start with the Telluride. These are 20s not a huge fan of these wheels um you know i'd rather this be chrome than like a titanium trim going around the side but this looks tasteful excuse me tastefully done um this has good ride height and i think it doesn't have a bad angle on it between the telluride and palisade i prefer the palisade but that's fine we'll start with the rear lid so this one is not automatic which I'm not a fan of, but this one does have third row. Um, and you can put these seats down just by pressing a button. So that's super dope. These other ones you have to use pull strings on. So with these down, you have a ton of space back here. And we'll just look at some of the amenities. You have a ton of carpeting down here and you have space here. So I'm assuming the spare is under this vehicle so right, since i hope this vehicle is helpful i'll let you know you do have a jack down here you have to lift this part up to get to this little cover here and then you do have an outlet here um so that's super dope and then you have anchor hooks here for things you may want to tie down but this is a ton of room like if you were gonna put a desk back here this might be this opening may not be wide enough for a mattress but a ton of usable space back here um, and I'll put these seats up and show you what that looks like with them all right and so this is what it looks like with the seats up I mean you don't have a ton of space back here but it is a three row SUV and so I'm surprised you have this much and I love that uh, I just wish this power this tailgate was power um, lifting and then you have a tow hitch here and then let's look at the sticker this has all-wheel drive so I assume it has a v6 and it does it has a 3.8 liter v6 so that's a huge v6 engine um we'll look under the hood in a second but again not a bad angle on it and i'm just gonna go tit for tat on these vehicles so moving over to the 2019 highlander the styling is not as good as a telluride this does look classy but it kind of looks minivan-y and, and even though my parents have one of these i think it's a handsome vehicle but it's not as stylish as the telluride um, it may age a little better. I like the wheels on this car a little bit better. These are 18s. That's a perfect size. You have good rubber, good rim size. I love that. Cannot complain about that. I love how you have this plastic trim around the wheel wells and bottoms so you're not getting your paint chipped up. That is super dope. You have the same thing on the Telluride. From the back, it's kind of a wash. I mean, this one looks a little bit better, especially when the lights light up because those are LEDs. But um this doesn't look bad but it kind of pinches it's not as square it kind of pinches off at the top um but i feel like this is an automatic tailgate and this is an xle so this may not be the best direct comparison um but we're gonna go with it just styling is what i'll focus on back here yeah, yeah this, the cargo space is a little bit lesser this is a third row right here with these yeah you don't have as much space back here and uh yeah so you have this back here that's okay i'm, I'm gonna tell you off the bat i love this light here but i prefer the space and design of the telluride uh more and so we'll go ahead and put these seats down just to see what that looks like. All right, so you have a, t a good amount of space back here as well. So yeah, that's not too bad. You know, again, if you wanted to throw a desk back here and uh, a lot of room. 
So I, I think that's what these third rows give you the option of, hey, we're going to the movies. You can fit six or seven people without worries. But I'll go ahead and get these seats up and compare the interiors of these vehicles. And then I will be done after we look at the engine bays. But I will say I love that these seats have a track and they go forward and back. So you can give these rear passengers more room. That helps with functionality. All right, so folks, getting in back of a third row is definitely a chore. I feel like the step up's not bad here. Yeah, this, this is for children. Like, this seat can slide up some. And... Uh, you know, it locks into place. I would not want to sit here, back here longer than like 30 minutes. You do sit up a little bit. Um, it's not claustrophobic. I have a window here. I have cup holders here. I do not have a charging port back here. Um, and this seat can recline a little bit, but it's not super comfortable. And I think you have to kind of recline it from the strings back here. Well, I guess... You can kind of grab those. So I'll sit in this one and see how that feels. So this feels a little bit better um, with the seat recline. And again, you lose you lose uh, space back here, but that's okay. Also, you have vents back here. Again, you have a window right here and light back here. So you'll be fine. You just, and you have cup holders. Um, so you can have a drink in your phone and you'll be all right. Um, I love that you can lift this to push the seat up, you know, so that's pretty dope, but that just still doesn't give you a ton of room to get out in. So it's still a little bit of a chore and I would need someone to move these seats up to get out. All right, and this makes me mad. I want struts in my SUV. Give me struts if I'm paying over $40,000. I want struts. Charge me an extra hundred, but put a strut structure in here. This engine is recessed. Um, this is a 3.5 liter V6. You, you're not gonna be doing a ton of servicing here, but if you need to, you can change spark plugs, change check fluids, change the battery. Air box is right here. Toyota's super responsible. Um, and this engine will go forever. This will go 200,000 miles plus with no issue. So I cannot complain about that. All right, folks, just for, you know, interior looks and design, I would be willing to get this SUV. I mean, the step up is better. Um, sitting back here, like this is so much easier to get into this vehicle. And I love the carpeting. Uh, back here and then there are electronic buttons on this that kind of release the seat to move forward So when you're getting out like you don't have to wait for someone you could press I think I don't know both of these are like electronic buttons Which is cool and scary at the same time because if they break you're in a world of trouble So I'd rather have the little clips that move up but time marches forward This is more comfortable than being back in the Highlander um, and you do have glass back here, so it's not claustrophobic. I feel like you're sitting a little bit lower in the seat, so where you can't see out as well, but you have a charge port back here. Um, you also have cup holders back here. Um, and I feel like you could probably, I mean, you're not going to fit, you don't want to sit three people back here unless they're kids. This seat does not feel as wide as the Highlander. I feel like these wheel hunches uh, our arches intrude a little bit more on this third row, but that's okay. But to get out of here, I just press this button and um, like the step down is not as bad. And then just stepping in, I mean, these seats look, if you've been or seen my video on the Tahoe and Suburban, these seats look wide like a front seat. And I love this. These seats are comfortable. Um, and I believe this is the same position that I had myself in when I was sitting behind the seat. So I could sit back here. So again, the functional space in this vehicle is amazing. I wear a size 13, my feet come under here, fine. I mean, you could do a road trip with six people super easy here. I love that. Um, again, the electronic actuators in the seats kind of concern me, but I love that you have adjustable seating like this and you have chargers right here. That's well thought of. And you have a drink cup, a cup holder right here. And you have this charger back here that you're not gonna use as much, but I love these charge ports in the seat. Um, the design of the door is nice. It closes solid, it opens wide. Um, 
yeah entry and exit from this seat is super convenient i love that the speaker's right here you know i love that this has a hard back and this leather here i mean this is a well-designed suv i cannot complain about this thing um, again, it's just about longevity. But if I was somebody who kept the car for like five years, I would trust this for five years. But when you start getting to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, I could, <laughs> I'd be afraid I'd have to replace like major engine components, you know, at or before 100,000 miles. Um, this has a locking center diff. The Highlander has all wheel drive, but this one has a little bit more function with its all wheel drive. And that one does have a locking diff, actually. Oddly enough, I don't know why on either one of these. Um, this one has heated seats. Everything is super straightforward. This is super basic, but so easy to use. These don't feel of the highest quality, though. The, this interior looks a little bit better than the um, Highlander, but it's just the quality is not there, um, in my opinion. You know, it does feel a little bit cheaper, um, at least on these buttons. Like, these seats are just as comfortable as a Highlander. There's not a ton of bolstering. This is here, but you're not going to need it. Um, I love the stitching here. This is soft touch. I love the LED lighting here. Um, I love the sunroof. Visibility is not going to be great. The front seat sits a little bit lower than that glass there, but this is why you have a rear view camera. Um, you do have lane departure. These buttons are easy to use. The scariest part of this vehicle is going to be this engine, even though this is a good size. I love the fact that Telluride is written here, and I love the fact that I already know these are going to be hydraulically supported. Ooh, yeah. And it's recessed a little bit, but gas direct injection, ah, man, I just don't know. V6 engines aren't, they've been around for a while. But I just don't know about this engine. Um, you can get to a lot of things here. Um, you got your air. Ooh, that's a fuse box. Um, where is the air box? Yeah, the air filter's right here. The battery's right here. Everything's pretty straightforward. You know, radiator fluid's right here. I just don't know about the engine. All in all, this is an excellent competitor. Um, and if I were being honest, if I was at this age buying an SUV... I would take a chance on the Telluride.